Welcome to BCH Technologies. This is Kevin. Today we're going to troubleshoot our printer, uh, Epson WF7610. And this printer is brought by Chris. If you do not know, we uh, we troubleshoot and we uh, we troubleshoot printers for other business locally. So if you live near Greensboro, uh, you're welcome to bring your printer in and uh, we can troubleshoot it for free. And uh, also, I didn't upload any video in last, in last two weeks. I have to apologize for that. The reason is I fall off my bike, mountain biking. I went to Colorado to climb 14 years, and I have this great idea that I can bike my way down the mountains. And uh, as I biking down the bicycle disintegrated and I got the three stitches. Uh, you can see it's pretty bad. So now I'm recovered and let's get started work. In this video, we're going to troubleshoot an Epson Workforce 7610 equipped it with a continuous ink supply system. We'll cover troubleshooting a CS, installing and priming refillable cartridges, as well as diagnosis and uh, unclogging printheads. The first problem is the printer complains about not recognizing all the cartridges. Many people would open up the printer lid and start troubleshooting. The correct way is to click the proceed button and then open the lid. We'll wait till the cartridge comes to a stop, then press and hold the reset button on the CIS. The reset button will discontinue the electronic current on the chip temporarily and thus fool the printer to think we can see as the button pressed, the corresponding symbol on the LED screen are grayed out. Once we release the button, they are light up again. We'll press the, ch the check button and make sure the cartridges are installed correctly. After closing the lid, Epson displays this screen. It looks scary, but I call it a happy screen. When we see this screen, we know that Epson is accepting the new cartridge. If you read it carefully, it says, You are not installed genuine Epson cartridges. Are you trying to save some money, naughty boy? Uh, the second uh, screen is like a divorce paper. It says, If you don't use Epson, and, uh, then I'm going to go live with my mom and I'm taking the kids. Uh, then it's Are you sure page. Okay, we got uh, our first problem solved. Okay, let's check on the nozzles, see if there's any clock nozzles. What nozzles? It's uh, totally blank, a, a piece of blank paper. So we'll use the printer's uh, building function to clean it twice. Then we'll wait two hours, then we clean it twice again. It's still a blank page after four cleanings. We took the CS out and uh, checked the ink in the cartridges. Actually, there wasn't any ink inside any of the cartridges. Uh, we took a syringe and um, then I, we removed the, the top plug from the cartridge and uh, trying to draw the ink from the tank. If you notice, uh, we already have the inks, uh, the tanks uh, air hole open and we installed uh, air filters on the ink tank. And you can see there's no ink coming in at all. 
Uh, so we've used a special adapter on top of the syringe and uh, trying to draw inks from the bottom, uh, just like how the printer consumes ink. The adapter can be found at the BCH website and go to accessories and uh, syringe and needles. And this is this four piece plastic refill needle. You can see no, no matter how much we suck, there's no ink coming in at all. Uh, once we took it apart, and you can see clearly uh, there's no ink. This CS is not made by us. Uh, we uh, covered their logo, so uh, just for uh, for a courtesy. Um, I'm not a big fan of this kind of CS. You can see there's a big column in the middle. The ink pressure is regulated by that uh, column. And yeah, I'm more favorable of uh, a split ink design. Uh, here's, a, here's our uh, split tank design. You can see the tank is divided by different chambers. And, uh, and uh, I think this is more stable than the, than the column one. We're going to install a new set of cartridges, a refillable cartridge rather than uh, doing the CS. So we go to cartridge and go to for Epson. And we select a 252. There are two holes. One is air hole in the back. You unplug this hole and uh, never plug it back. Just leave it open. Then there's a refill hole in the middle uh, sealed by a clear plug. We we'll use like a, something to poke it in and remove it. The two holes are connected, and if you find the, uh, one hole is really hard to get ink in, you're filling the wrong hole. You're filling the air hole. The another one is very easy to get ink in, and you won't damage the printer if you use the wrong hole. It just takes a lot, really really long time to fill from the air hole. We're going to borrow the plug from the air hole to seal this. So the refill hole is sealed and the air hole is open. And the only time you want to seal the air hole is probably you take a cartridge to somewhere and uh, you don't want to spill. Uh, other than that, uh, just keep it open. Uh, here's my secret touch and uh, it's an optional step. If you happen to have a priming uh, tip, Use the priming tip to draw a little bit of air uh, and from the bottom until you can see the It's highly optional. Uh, just for me, I like to do that to reduce the chance to get the clogging. If you don't have a tip, and you can get one very cheaply from uh, our website. It's under accessories and uh, syringe and needles. Uh, so this guy, four-piece plastic uh, refill needle tip for quick ink, tra ink transfer and the priming CS.
Oh, by the way, uh, this is sublimation ink, and uh, that's why it uh, looks so weird. The black look like a brown, and uh, the sublimation ink you have to do a heat transfer to show the true color. Secret ingredient. Okay, here's one error that we got lots of calls. Uh, once you install a new set of cartridge, and it says a falling cartridge cannot be detected, uh, the reason is you probably opened up the, the lid without letting the printer know. So it's pretty easy to uh, correct. Okay, let's uh, click proceed and open up the printer. You can see once you unclick the uh, the cartridge, uh, the one on the corresponding LCD uh, panel is grayed out. Once you you press it down, and uh, it slide up again. And I'll, I'll just unclick the magenta just for sure. Then we'll continue. And then we get this happy screen. You have not installed genuine Epson cartridge. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, this is not Epson cartridge. Proceed. And uh, warnings, okay. And uh, do you want to still use this ink? Yes. Done. And after we have an, a nozzle check, it turns out that the yellow is uh, is clogged pretty heavily. Um, the magenta is uh, partial of a part of magenta is clogged. Uh, of course, we do two uh, building cleaning functions. Then wait two hours. Then then two more. Then to do two more. And uh, after that, it's still clogged. Uh, we also made some printout, and you can see the yellow, uh, the clock yellow. It's time to bring out the big guns. We use this. Uh, Triple action cleaning solutions, which is at accessories and anti clogging agent. The triple cleaning solution work on dye pigment and sublimation ink. Because this ink is a sublimation ink, so we have to use the triple cleaning solution, which is green color. We turn on the printer. As soon as the cartridge can move, we unplug the printer. The reason is we don't want the printer to lock the cartridge so we cannot move it anymore. Then we take a piece of paper towel, put it underneath the, uh, the ink pad, and then we move the cartridge to the middle. Then we use this tool from uh, accessories and uh, priming clip and syringe. And uh, it's this unclogging syringe tool for Epson. Um, this is nothing special about this two. It's just a syringe with a tube, but the tube is tested to fit perfectly and tightly with uh, the ink intake. So 
uh, make sure that uh, when you pick up the tube, make uh, make sure it fits the model. Otherwise, you may have a bigger tube, and uh, so the ink will ink will be everywhere uh, when you use it. And uh, we fit one end to the ink intake, and another side with a syringe. When we squeeze, remember to not squeeze too hard. And uh, it's like uh, half the half the um, force as you squeeze a lemon to make lemonade. But uh, twice as hard as uh, old lady squeeze a uh, peach. Um, yeah, that that's how it, that's where I put it. Uh, you're gonna feel the you can you, you're gonna feel the print has open up and then you can you can inject consistently uh, with a with, uh, uh, with a cleaning solution. You can see is yeah now it's the breakthrough that unclog it. Now you can gradually push the uh, push the cleaning solution in, inside. And the uh, first, uh, first cleaning. As horrible as expected. And then do another cleaning. Okay, let me show you how to uh, deal with uh, warning messages. You might get this warning message that uh, the ink is low, and you try to reset the chips, the chips on the cartridge, and nothing happens. The reason is uh, your cartridge is auto reset, so there's no way you can reset it manually. So what we're going to do is just ignore those warnings, just click OK, yes, and just keep using the printer. And just print more pages, and just ignore all those messages. Uh, they are just trying to get you into the store and buy real Epson cartridges. Just say OK, and uh, nothing can happen. Okay, you just keep printing until one day this happens as I cannot recognize the falling ink cartridge. This is great because the magenta cartridge has been reset and the, pin, the printer cannot figure out how can you uh, get a new cartridge but you, you didn't open the printer lid. So let's fold the printer. So we took, don't forget, click a proceed. Okay, then open the printer door. And now, what we're going to do is uh, just do exactly what the printer says. We took the magenta out. No, mat no, no matter how many ink in the cartridge, we're going to fill it all the way up to the top. And uh, um, plug the refill hole, keep the air hole open, then press it down until we see the magenta icon light up. Then we we'll do a check. And they says good. Close the scanner scanner unit. Actually, ninety nine percent time we should do whatever apps ask us to do. Okay, remember the happy screen. You have not installed genuine apps and ink cartridges. Manjinda. Perfect. So what do we do? Proceed. Proceed. 
not quiz. What are we, what are we gonna, gonna do with this screen? Yes. So if you're sitting level, it's full. Okay, let me uh, uh, do a heat transfer so I can show you the true color. Uh, so you don't have to look at this ugly, uh, ugly black anymore. So we print off a page on the transfer paper. Uh, so what you do is you print on a transfer paper, and uh, you can uh, you can uh, press it. Press this is called hot press. You can press it on uh, on, on uh, any kind of. Uh, a polyester directly and uh, or you can press on uh, treated uh, cotton uh, if you have a cotton you have to have a kind of treatment and also you can press on uh, uh, coated uh, ceramics and uh, vinyl you can do it directly so you have to um, you figure out like uh, how you're going to treat the material um, so basically we print on a piece of um, uh, uh, T-shirts, which made out of a vinyl, not vinyl, um, the polyester T-shirts. So when the ink is heated, it has a, uh, it has a face transfer. It transferred to another face, and now it shows true color. So now you see black is black, yellow is yellow. And of course, you need to write everything reverse in reverse. I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.ech-technologies.com. Thank you. Have a good day. Cheers.